I gotta sort these out, sort those out, figure out this, organize some of these, work through a lot of these, and I need to change these up. Hello! In the last episode, I added this project inbox to my daily notes, and I showed you around the process of me using Morgan and Zotero, but today what I want to do is organize my Obsidian. I had changed my actions inbox very slightly, and I've separated it into priority, inbox, and remember. So remember are reminders from the future, so due tasks in the future. Inbox are things I need to do today, and priority are things that are from previously that I need to get done. So something that's overdue or something that's high priority, in this case, a medium priority. The task inbox is probably the best place to start. Pin. Cold tasks. Check. But I've added a couple of templates, so I did have a project template, now I have a blog and a video project template, and it just adds the blog or video hashtag, saves me doing it. Like that, and that. Working through these content ideas, you can see I've actually made this one into a project, so I've created the project inside of the task, and now I'm going to tick the task off, because it is appearing up here. If I don't want to make it into a piece of content, then I'll just tick the task off, and if I'm not sure, then I'm just going to leave it there. Nope. Yep. Right, well now I have a load of ideas and a load of projects and stuff to get done, I should probably start thinking about uh, adding actions to it. I've decided to add a task at the bottom of each video project and blog project because it then becomes overdue when I haven't done anything with it for over two weeks, so it means that the content is going to be scheduled or at least thrown out, so this long list of unscheduled projects still gets managed through the task dashboard. I've also created a video task and blog task template, and what this allows me to do is put record, edit, upload, publish, and the appropriate created date and due date in for those tasks so I can schedule it out when I need to. However, I am thinking of putting all of this from the template into the YAML, into the front matter, so when I'm using the, the TP templater, I can actually reference the deadline day, and if I can reference that, then this can automatically be the deadline rather than me having to guess or adjust it at all. So after a little bit of fiddling, I've changed the video project template, I've now got the tags and deadline in the YAML, I don't have both of these things in, so I don't have the project or the days left, because if you put the JavaScript into the YAML for whatever reason, the YAML breaks, so I'm keeping it out. And what that's allowed me to do is use the front matter information, so the deadline date, and put that as a due date for the upload and publish tasks. So now if I go into my computer brain and I activate that template, it's now going to bring in the tags, the deadline, days left, progress, also bring in the task down the bottom for planning the content out. Let's add the deadline that's, I don't know, the 10th. Now we add the video tasks, and now the upload and publish due dates are the deadline of this project, and I don't have to change that manually, it was automatically done. As you may have noticed, all of those projects are now in my folder system, which is making it look kind of messy, and now I want to organize all of this in a different way. Previously, I had working notes and source notes. Source notes being tagged with source and the others being given a status, other, waiting, written, or writing. But I have no way of knowing what sort of quality those notes are. I could have a written note that's really, really small, or I could have a written note that's really, really large with lots of depth and lots of references. So I want to add more information into my research notes. Then when I have a look at the research dashboard, it's not just a list of a load of notes. So this is what I'm going to be working on now. But before I get there, I need to organize my files. Let's change this setting, notes, change this, change this output, change this output, drag all of them into there. And before I move all of these notes into the main folder, I do want to check that all of these have a tag. So let's look for a table from the notes working folder and to see if there is anything without a notes tag. If I get rid of that exclamation mark in theory, it should say the amount of notes we have in the folder. So 473, 473, good. Just so satisfying. Yeah, so I messed up. When I was uh, searching for it, I didn't actually ask whether it contained the tag. I just put the tag in. So um, I've just moved all the stuff and need to double check it. So I've double checked it. And there are 11 files that don't have any tags in. So I'm going to go through those now. All sorted. So I have a list of all the people pages that have a people tag. And now I'm going to find a list of all the others, which is like every other page. Unfortunately, assigning a tag to multiple files isn't a feature in Obsidian, so I'm going to have to manually do this. So, music time. Having listened to a bit of music, I've now gone through, done the people, done the books, now on to the next folder. So, let's look for all of the notes in the sources folder now that doesn't have any sort of tag. 1,600. It's going to take a while. Before I go and tag these 1,000 plus notes, rate these 100 plus notes, and sort these 300 plus notes, I figured I'd explain why I'm actually doing this. 
You can see in the search I have note to write, and this was the written, writing, and waiting tags. I've merged them all together. Right click and then rename the tags, Tag Wrangler. If I take approaches to human cognition as an example, I've got synopsis, I've got other sections, and when I go down to the to-do section, it's, it's basically empty, but I don't have any future questions or critiques, synthesis, I don't know how many references are in here, I don't know what the quality of the page is, I don't know what the depth of understanding is, I know nothing unless I reread through the whole page, and this page is almost 5,000 words, and I've got loads of pages very similar to this that have loads of words, but I don't know whether they're deep or whether they're shallow explorations or explanations of whatever the topic is. So what I want my research dashboard to have is a level, a quality level of the pages, whether I've got deep research, whether I've got shallow research, whether I've critiqued something, whether I need to explore one narrative a little bit further, or other different qualities that I want to add to the page, but I can't currently do that. So for example, in this page, maybe I add a depth value to all of my pages and say, okay, this is three stars out of five, then I can see, okay, I could probably go into more depth on that page, or maybe I don't need to go into depth on a page, and it gives me a rating scale of depth, quality, perception, like the H index you would get in academic papers and articles, but for my notes. It's a new day, I've gone through and tagged all of the source notes, I'm not going to do any of the rating until I've figured out what metrics I'm actually going to put on those for the quality, let me know in the comment section below what metrics you would add, so depth, clarity, references, those sorts of things, uh, but I am going to go through and sort these notes slash others, and these are notes that have been in my system for probably over a year, and yeah, I updated them every once in a while, but I, yeah, I just need to sort through these. Now for most of these notes, these are really small and there's not much to them, so I'm going to get rid of that, copy that, bring it in there, add two hashes, make it a header, then I'm going to merge the note with something that's appropriate, so apps and geared, now it's gone. Now you can see in the outline down the bottom, we've got a heading two, so it's underneath to do because it jumps it, it merges it right down the bottom of the page. I've now got this section down here, so when I do end up going through this page and, and processing this page and rating it, uh, I will have the information there. Update time on the file management. You can see my notes folder, I've still got over 4,000 notes, but I don't have over 5,000 notes in the vault. Now when I open up my notes folder, you can see I've just got a load of notes. I do have an image folder inside of it, but all of these notes are just my source notes, my working notes, everything. Um, and the most modified note is at the top. I rarely go into my folder system, but what this folder system allows is that I have a setting inside of Obsidian, default location for new notes, notes folder, so now I don't have to worry about moving a file from one folder to another folder, it just all goes into the notes folder. And when I have a look at the overarching tags, there aren't actually any more tags than there were before. I'm using Tag Wrangler, which allows me to do other things with the tags pane. So you can see if I go into the notes, it's looking for all of the notes, and then I can right click and then require this in search. So now it's looking for the notes tag and people tag. Now I don't have any notes there. Or I can right click and exclude the notes from the search. An example search, maybe I want to look for projects specific to business, so I'm going to require that. Now I'm looking for projects business, which are these. But by far the most useful feature in Tag Wrangler is to be able to rename tags. So when I right click, rename, I can just change the name and go through and change all of those tags, which is why I added tags to all the notes that didn't have tags. Now during this week, there was actually an online conference going on. The first three meetings were yesterday, or talks, lectures, sessions, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and I've taken some notes in here. But as you can see in the lineup, I'm actually speaking at the conference right on the last day, the last session of the last day. And you can see yesterday up in my daily log, I actually added in a couple of tasks that I wanted to do for the talk. So they weren't getting the talk done, they were just related to the talk and actually came from a couple of these sessions. And now in my today task inbox, you can see down here, if I have a look at the data view, it's looking for anything that was yesterday and today and is due either before today or today. Uh, so all of the tasks that were yesterday for the talk are going to appear here. And you can see there they are. And I can direct myself straight to the talk. And inside of the talk, I completed it because I have finished some notes for the talk. That's, that's all down here. But my related actions from yesterday's talks um, were here. And when I listen to the talks today and then the talks tomorrow and then the day after before mine, I can then add in other tasks for things I maybe want to change or add or alter in my talk. So that's what I'm gonna do now. As these tasks were related tasks and weren't stored in this project, it's not gonna affect the progress, but when I tick them off, they do disappear from this view. You can see when it's gonna disappear there. Then if I go back to the daily note, it's actually being completed in this day, not that one. You can look at this note in my Obsidian Publish, link in description, but inside of the notes I have links to each section or block or page that the point that I'm raising is actually talking about. 
So inside the extended cognition section of the talk, I've split up into three different sections. You can see over here, we've got the introduction, then you've got extended cognition, systems theory, and ecological psychology. Now I have a note on all three of those things and a note on note taking as well, which is actually linked at the top here. But when I go into the sections, these are the points that I have. The bold words are just triggers for me to remember what it is that I'm talking about. But there's Tiago Forte. There's the tweet that I reference, and there's my actual note from the tweet that I reference. There's the page of extended cognition. There's the section in that page that that talks about Andy and David's work. As I go through the talk, I talk about functionalism, and that's the section on functionalism. I go through inference to the best explanation. There's that block. And if I open this up, it's a block reference to the page. So I'm still in the extended cognition page, which was linked right at the top, but it goes directly to the block that I'm talking about. Cognitive bloat, the same. Mark of the cognitive, the same. It all directs back to a block specific to that point that I'm trying to make. Where these block references or section references become useful is I can just link out to this one note, this talk note. And when I'm talking about Otto's notebook, which is an example from Andy and David's uh, research, if they want to know more about it, they can just hover over. And now I have the entire section. So Otto's thought experiment, there's the entire section inside of my extended cognition note with a couple of other references that they can go and have a look at. So if they're interested, they can explore themselves in my notes while I'm talking, or they can pause me if it's on a recording on next channel or whatever. So all of the notes that I ever have and all of the dynamic notes. So if, for example, I find out something more about Otto's thought experiment, I can write it in this section. And because it's linked inside of Obsidian, it will then update here because this is just referencing the original source. This then allows this static talk page, this static project page to be dynamic in my notes because as my notes evolve, so for example, there's a case with Riley versus California, which is uh, extended assault and using extended cognition into listen to the talk. Um, but basically anything that happens with Riley versus California, or maybe another court case, uh, I can reference that in here. So you can see there's, there's a link to another block. And as you go through the notes, as my knowledge expands, as something becomes deeper, everything in this note will still be relevant because it will be updated as my notes update. And the same thing for systems theory, the same thing can be said for ecological psychology, recent papers, and all the other different things. Everything is linked. And this is where notes and projects start to merge together inside of my system because this is a note. This is a note of notes, but it's also a project. You can see it's a project for business because it's, it's a business style talk that I have a deadline for. I have a deadline to finish this note project. But this note project is specific in time for when the talk is due, i.e. Friday. But all the other notes are dynamic. So it's a note and a project at the same time. For those of you unfamiliar with systems theory, that's a very basic version of what a note is. A note is a part of a system, a complex system being dynamic and things can emerge. So what I'm talking about is emerging from all of the connections of, you can see here there's, there's dots, but these are all the notes that I'm connecting inside of that one document, which is a part of my note system, but also a system in itself. And it's dynamic as all of my other notes change and evolve, which I go over in my talk, which I may leave a link in the description, depending on if it's out by the time this video is published. And that does actually remind me, I need to change the note inbox data view query because that's now out of date because I've changed all the folders and stuff. So I'll get back to you in a second. So I've changed the data view search. I've got rid of data view for the moment. So if I click out of it, it doesn't just load everything. Um, we're going for a table still without the ID. I'm using the file link and I'm calling it unlinked sources because the sources that are unlinked, I would probably re like rename that to notes or something. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to keep with sources for the moment. We've got note source as the hashtag. It was notes. So I got rid of the S and it's just now note, um, note source. It doesn't look at the templates folder, so it's not going to look at all of the templates as well, which I don't want. And I don't want it to look at the people either because the people aren't going to be related to research necessarily. They'll be related to sources. So they're not going to have a relation to a research page, which is what this is looking for. It's looking for sources that isn't related to a project or anything to do with research. So where there is not, that's the exclamation mark, contains file in links of the file tags note to rate. And now I will change the to rate to whatever I'm changing this to, but at the moment we've got other and the to rate. So anything that has a tag that is related to an other note is still going to appear in this list, which is why I'm not really going to pay attention to this data view query until I've sorted out the other query, which is still sitting at 246 because I'm listening to the conference and not going back and forwards between pages.